What the fuck? Hello fellow lovers of the liminal and the weird and welcome to another video by Liminal Spaces. Today I'm very excited to talk about the Futurological Congress by Stanislaw Lem. This book was published in 1971 in Polish and then translated into English in 1974 by Michael Candle. And as far as I know, he's the only translator of this work. And this book is beyond a doubt one of the weirdest that I have ever done on this channel. Uh, you guys recommended this uh, writer to me a lot, and I went through and picked this one to be my first read from him because it looked like the most challenging of his reads, and it was a wild uh, hallucinogenic ride. And of course, that is the particular theme of this book, is the concept of hallucination. This really was an incredible read, and it goes way beyond the concept of an unreliable narrator all the way to an unreliable storyline. We never know what is real because layers of reality keep getting peeled away in a process that keeps us wondering if, we were, if we're just at another layer or if we've finally come to the core of this strange world that he lays out here. The book takes place in, a, in both 24 hours and hundreds of years of time. And I know that's confusing, but you'll have to read the book to see what I mean by that. Uh, the story opens in an unspecified future where our main character, who I'm going to call Tichy, uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name in Polish. His first name is I-J-O-N. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but his last name is Tichy, and I'll be calling him that throughout the rest of this video. Uh, our main character, Tichy, is just arriving at the Hilton Hotel in Costa Rica for the 8th Annual Futurological Congress, which is kind of a think tank that uh, worries about problems that could occur in the future, and they're talking about overpopulation at this specific Congress. A riot or a revolution breaks out during the proceedings of the Congress, and in order to combat this, the government drops bombs that are filled with hallucinogenic drugs to quell the revolution. Uh, of course, all of our characters, specifically uh, Tichy uh, and his good professor friend, are also affected by these drugs, and they run down into the sewers underneath the Hilton in order to avoid first being caught up in the riot or revolution and second, trying to avoid being affected by these drugs. Unfortunately, they can't avoid breathing in all these drugs and they start tripping in and out of consciousness, which makes it impossible to tell what is real and what is not. The novel focuses on Tichy's travel through time uh, through his mind, and through many different realities. This is such a vague plot intro, I know, uh, but the power of this book is in the weirdness of the prose. So it's kind of hard to give a specific plot idea that will get you hooked on the idea of reading this. Uh, the enjoyment of this book is reading these strange, witty, uh, humorous at times prose and seeing the effect that the removal of layer after layer of reality has on this main character. It's really interesting. I read a review online that said that Lem in this novel outdicks Philip K. Dick, which I found was a, a really interesting concept and I've thought about that a lot. And while I don't agree 100% with that, and I'll go more into that with my deep read, um, I do see where they were coming from because it seems like this novel is interested in similar themes. What is reality to what uh, Philip K. Dick writes about? Uh, and Philip K. Dick also has characters that hallucinate and can't seem to find their way back to reality. And it does seem in this that Lem turns that up to 11, right? There's there's more layers in this than, say, the three stigmata of Palmer Eldritch of 
Philip K. Dick's book. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if he necessarily outdid Dick. I feel like Lem, for a large chunk of this book, relies more on wit, satire, and humor, which is fine, uh, than he does the depth. And there is depth in this book. Don't get me wrong. It's huge. Uh, you will, you will, your mind will be blown reading this from the depth. But the, there's chunks of it that don't have that. And I feel like the plot buildup in some of Dick's novels works a little better. So I wouldn't... I think they were both tackling similar subjects and they came about it from slightly different ways, which I'll get into more in my deep read. The prose in this story is really something to behold. At times, prose is absurd to a level that makes it almost incomprehensible. And at other times, the prose is perfectly straightforward. And I really enjoyed both aspects of this jumping from abstract concepts in a world that's real so an abstractness of prose for the real world followed by a real succinct and direct prose when he is talking about hallucinatory worlds and i think that that's that's quite a statement that the prose makes there uh, and it allows some real variety uh, in this book of of tone and theme, which I found really enjoyable. The characters of this are well thought out. There's really only two or three at most. I felt kind of distance from Titchy at first, but uh, I got closer to him as as the psychic distance closed between the different parts of the book. The book is all in first person, which I really enjoy, first person narratives. Uh, it... it creates a closeness to the characters, which this one avoids at first, but eventually that closeness does come in in the later parts. I found that for the first... Um, th this book is 148 pages long, and I found that for the first 65 pages, I absolutely had to give up any notion of trying to interpret what was happening in this text. It was chaotic absurdism, that really bucked against and pushed away from the idea of an, of interpreting the text. So when you read this, note that for the first little bit, you have to go along with it. And I've had this conversation with my buddy Bo about Philip K. Dick. He recently read Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And he said the first chapter made him feel stupid because he didn't know what was going on. And that is, a, a I think, a, a bad way to look at it. He wasn't stupid for not understanding the world that Dick was creating. Um, Dick and Lem both have a tendency to just throw you in and give you kind of a sink or swim situation that you have to deal with. And this one has what I felt to be a very long sink or swim situation. So you have to enjoy this prose, not as a puzzle that you're trying to interpret, but as... I've seen a lot of people call it dark humor, uh, but yeah, as kind of a witty look at the future of, of world building that presents an, an absurd society that humanity has become, right? You get stuff like his hotel has a card that says guaranteed to be bomb free in his room. His suite is insane. It has a palm tree grove and an orchestra of women playing classical music, but also doing a strip tease at the same time, right? And then when the hallucinations start, you get really weird stuff like rats walking upright, and the rats start mimicking the humans, and we're not sure if this is hallucination or if it's because the rats are breathing in the drugs as well. Uh, so that could be real or false. You have to let these kind of strange images and witticisms about the possibility of future society carry you through the book. And if you're able to do that, the payoff on this was incredible. The, the, from page 65 to 148 is some of the most intense 
looks at utopia that I've ever seen. It takes the concept of Soma that's introduced to us in Brave New World by Aldous Huxley to a level that is far, far beyond, and it is wonderful for that. So I would rate this book easily a 9 out of 10. It would have been a, a 10 out of 10, but I found that the, the beginning was a little bit hard to get through, but the payoff at the end is so incredible and so worth it. This is, beyond a doubt, one of the weirdest books I've ever read, and I would absolutely recommend that you, you read this book. This should be high up on your to be read list. It was fantastic. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please click like. And if you like this kind of content, please click subscribe. We'll be making a lot more of it in the future. And thank you so much for watching.